Good. Bienvenidos, toda la gente a este programa. Welcome everyone to our program. I'm your host, Francisco Frank Garcia II, and this is an original Historical Music Society of Detroit special presentation. Our special guest today is Mr. Kenneth Neek Green, the leader and the founder of the Description Art Ensemble. We're going to be sharing some live music, we're going to be sharing some memories, and we're going to take a historic journey through description. Join us as we welcome Mr. Kenneth Neek Green. Welcome to our program, Neek. Well, thank you for having me, Frank. Let's talk a little bit about the history, your personal history, how you started in music, what, were you, what was your inspiration, who were your idols, who were your icons, so to speak? Well, it began as a child. One day when I was uh, moving throughout my house, I heard a, a sound on the uh, stereo or, or the record player, as it was back then. And uh, I asked my brother, who was that? And he told me it was John Coltrane. Well, from that point on, it was on. And so I have to give most of the credit to my older brother, who was Mickey Green, who's a bass player in his own right that was um, quite famous around town and, and throughout the country. Um, but Train had something that caught my ear. And, and um, when that happened, um, it was my desire then to try and play at that time the saxophone however um our parents would hear none of that because <laughs> that meant buying one you know and um so uh since my family was rather large it was i had four siblings um that didn't happen however there was a piano in the house so um i began to instruct myself and then i I did some formal studies here in town at the Art Center Music School and the Northwestern School of Music. But um, I'd have to say that as far as um, musicians, I, uh, my favorite for all times would have to be Andrew Hill. Um, I've enjoyed uh, Herbie Hancock and, and a few others. Um, I especially enjoy Wayne Shorter. Although he's not a piano player, he's an uh, inspiration in terms of composition. What is it about Andrew Hill that stands out above somebody, say, like a Herbie Hancock? Well, Andrew was versed in some other technologies. And, and I say that, I mean, he, he didn't play a regular 251 like a 251. He, he seemed to input it with a more of a African influence, uh, more of a, a Eastern influence, mm -hmm. although I think Andrew was from the South, but he had his hands on some other stuff. So I kind of enjoy Andrew because he, he did some things that were a little bit different. How old were you when you first started seriously studying the, the piano? I must have been about 17, 18 when I begin to study outside of my home. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about some of the uh, some of your earliest memories with uh, your first efforts as a, uh, well first as a saxophonist and then as a pianist. <laughs> well I don't have a lot of early memories in terms of that because it was about trying to, to get it under my hands and um, that was not easy. Um, I do recall um, when I went away to school, um, I went to a place that was void of any black music, so it necessitated that we had to make our own. And um, so I started a, a little group. Um, it turned out to be quite successful. Um, and this is where I met uh, one of our drummers who um, we continue to play today. Um, other than that, I, I played in my high school band. I played the cymbals and the flute. And you went to high school here in Detroit? That's correct. McKenzie. McKenzie. Right. Oh, Big Mac. <laughs> yeah. And we have fond memories of McKenzie. Wonderful uh, school. Wonderful school. Yeah. Tell me, how did you feel when you actually made the connection with 
the piano and knew that at that point a lifelong relationship was in the process of being cemented. And that was just the very first step into being able to branch off in all directions, if you will. Well, strangely enough, Frank, I didn't make that connection until about 20 years later. <laughs> it was then that I discovered that the piano, it was a, an awesome beast. Um, it still is because I've yet to master this, this uh, instrument. However, it's, it's very clear that um, physically the piano holds um, a great deal of the music that we, we are, uh, can hear and that we are familiar with. Um, in other words, the ranges are so as such that um, the piano encompasses most of the ranges. <coughs> It's, uh, it's still awesome, and, um, and the relationship is, to me, at this point, is not so much as being a, a player, a musician, as it is a composer. I think that, um, that the piano itself is it's, uh, it's a medium for playing the music that the, at the most high gives us. Uh, I mean, I'm under the impression, and I, I understand this now, that each day that we arise and awaken, there's um, um, massive amounts of, of musical notes and inflections being poured down from the heavens. And it's about us being able to have our antenna sharp enough that we can receive these. And so what we do is we receive the notes and, and rearrange them and change them and put them into what, a form that we would call a song. This, I, I'm appreciative, and I don't think it had much to do with the piano as much as uh, a spiritual connection with the Most High. Okay, so just like with most of us, the piano was a medium Absolutely. for you to tap into the realm of astral energy. Absolutely. Uh, you said so well, my brother. <laughs> Tell me about who was, in the, who was the first personnel in the very first group that you formed, the first, was it known as description from the beginning? No, in fact, we <coughs> were um, not up on names and, and understanding that the name holds the key to the activity. So um, we kind of allowed our audience to name the band and then they named it the Nick's Jazz Band, Nick's Jazz Band. But uh, the first personnel was uh, Dushan Mosley, who's a drummer now who plays with the Eight Bow Souls in Chicago. Um, it's a, uh, a well-received and recorded group. Um, he played the drums. Um, we had a bass player who had three strings on his bass. His name was Craig Fielder. And Craig has gone on since then to become a, um, a rock star in his own right. Um, we also had um, uh, Ski to C.R. Shelton, a tenor saxophonist who continue to play today, and he's here in Detroit, so we still get together and play. Um, and then from there, it was um, a lot of ins and outs, so to speak, different individuals. As with any musical project that attracts those out of curiosity, those out of wonderment, those out of a sense of wanting or needing to belong to a certain idiom of music, especially that's being created from the ground up. Let's uh, tell us a little bit about this clip that we're getting ready to see. The name of the tune, I believe, is called Gratitude. Yeah, well, Gratitude is, um, is a composition that um, I wrote. Um, it was, well, the centerpiece of the project, Gratitude. And, and the Project Gratitude was um, a project to, perhaps I should start uh, a little before that and talk about description so then you can have an idea of where the Gratitude Project came from. But the description was formed to, um, to play the, the space waves and the energy waves of, um, of our existence here and to celebrate the good times as well as the ills of our society. So when we do this through um, creative writing, creative dance, and creative music, uh, the music is, 
is what we might call organic uh, creative music. Um, and we also have um, artists and poets. So it's, it's, it grew to be quite a production. But it was necessary so that we could get the message out. And, and the message in this particular um, clip that I guess we're about to take a look at is, um, is from a project to celebrate our gratitude for being here, our gratitude to the Most High for allowing us to understand the music and to know that that once that we are mediums ourselves as well as the instruments. And so what we try to do is to um, be the best medium we can be and reflect the, the goodness back to the Most High. So uh, naturally what arose from this was uh, gratitude. And the project includes several other songs, but I think this clip that we're about to see was done in, in a Sparrow studio, so it, you won't get the full effect of, of the project itself unless we got another clip that we're going to see tonight and then you may have a better understanding of what Sparrow Studio was in Chicago mm -hmm. it's still there well why don't we show this to our viewing audience mm -hmm. and let's all take a look at this clip of the description art ensemble performing gratitude <laughs> <laughs> 